Hey there, this is Jamila at Lightspeed. Welcome to another quick tutorial. Today we'll be looking at how to design Lightspeed's Conform Plus theme. It's the one that comes pre-installed when you purchase Lightspeed e-commerce. First things first, get logged into your e-com back office, and I want to go take a look at what the website looks like right now. At the top left, I'm going to hover next to the I and click on it. That opens up the customer facing website. Welcome to my website. This is probably what all of your websites look like if you haven't touched any design aspects. However, right about now I need to explain that you need to have some product knowledge and some category knowledge. I've already made my products and my categories visible as you can see here. So again, you do need to have some product and category knowledge. Let's go back to the Ecom back office. The first thing I'd like to start with is adding content to the home page. So we won't be changing any colors or anything like that just yet. Let's just start with adding some content. I'm going to go to the content section, which brings you to your pages. Now in the pages section, yes, your legal pages do live here, but I want to go down here to home page. You'll notice on the right that it is locked. It's not visible. Okay, but that doesn't matter because whatever I do to home page, it'll still show up on the home page with this specific theme. Let's open it up. And of course, in the content box over here is where we're going to add some content. I've pasted in a little block of text. And because I have a content editor in here, I do have the ability to insert videos or photos, hyperlinks, etc. What I want to do today is upload a photo down here. So let's hit enter a couple times. Let's click on the photo button. Now I've already uploaded the photo that I want to use. Now if you haven't uploaded it yet, you're going to click on the little magnifying glass just like me. And you will need to upload your files right in here. There'll be a big upload button right in the middle. Now since mine are already here, I can just choose the file, double check those dimensions, I like them, click OK, and then boom, that adds the photo right into the section here. Now I want to pick everything up, and I'm going to format to a line in the center. There we go. Let's hit save, and let's go take a look at that change. So I'm going to head back to my already open tab over here to my customer facing website and in order to see the change I've just made I'm going to refresh the page. Now you can do that by clicking on refresh, you can do that by clicking on home, whichever way you prefer. And there is the content that I added to my home page with my photo. So already I've got something going on in the middle of the website and next up what I want to do is start using Lightspeed's tutorial. I want to show you how to create those headlines, featured categories and featured products. Let's go take a look. I'm back in my Ecom back office. Let's go back home. And now it's time to pop into the design section. Now those three tools that we saw right on the home page are right in the design menu as you enter it. But before we look at them, when you jump into the design section of Lightspeed eCommerce, the first place you land is the theme editor. Now in the theme editor, you can see what theme you currently have installed. Again, I have Conform Plus. It's pre-installed when you purchase Lightspeed eCommerce. It's a free theme and it's made by Lightspeed. Now, I'd like to take just two seconds to let you know that each theme is unique and each theme has its own documentation. Every single theme might have different image requirements, so that's really important to note. If pictures are not looking good on the website, it's because we're not respecting the image requirements and if we do respect them, that's when they'll start looking good on the website. Now we will go into the edit theme here and start looking at how to change colors, add logos, but first, let's use Lightspeed's tools. Over here on the left, I've got headlines, featured products, and featured categories. Let's jump into headlines and create our very first headline. Now let's give it a name. Let's give it a language. And let's hit save. Now only once you save your headline can you actually add a picture. So remember to not skip that last part. It's very easy to whoops, go look at your website and then not see an actual picture, just a placeholder. So I'm dragging and dropping a little picture here. Now this big headline that we're creating, we can make that link to a specific place. You can drop a URL in here and it brings you to that URL or you could choose a brand, a product, or a category for this headline image to link to. Let's move over to Featured Products, and let's add our first Featured Product. Now for Featured Products and Categories, this is work that you've already done, so you just need to select that work. 
Now you guys will have a lot more products than me, so I'd like to show you the filtering option for featured products. I'd like to only see in this list products that are currently visible in the store. I select, I choose yes, and I apply the filter. That way I will only see products that are marked as visible on my website. I'm choosing the two products that I have, I'm hitting close, so that I can move on to featured categories now at the bottom left. All right, let's choose our first featured category like this, and I'm gonna choose my main collections here. Footwear, collections, apparel, and I'm gonna close. Now remember, these categories that you made visible for your products, they got pushed over from your point of sale. There's no purpose for a picture on categories on your point of sale. So when you're featuring categories on your main website, you do have to add some pictures. I've already done that. Let's go look at those three changes we made. Headlines, featured products, and featured categories. I'm back on my website. I'm going to click Home to refresh, and we'll see those changes. All right, so we're looking at a big headline over here. Down below is the content that we added together through the home page under content. And then down below here, we can see my three featured categories and two featured products. And that was just Lightspeed's design tips and tricks. I now want to jump into the actual theme editor so that we can start choosing our font, we can add our logo, perhaps we could add some banners right onto the home page. Let's go take a look at that. I'm going to head back into my Ecom back office, and since I'm already in the design menu, I just click on Theme Editor. And now we can finally jump into Edit Theme over here. Welcome to the Theme Preview section. The purpose of this section is to make changes to your website and see what they look like before actually applying those changes to your website. So quick interface overview here. On the left, we have the main menu where you can start making changes to your website and then you get to preview that over here on the right. Now, of course, guys, the true test is always to look at those final changes on the website because in here you can see that it's a little smaller than what my web page size would usually be. Speaking of the look of the website, you do have also different types of previews at the top here. So computer is what we'll be sticking to, but you can look at this as if it were on a tablet. And you can, of course, look at this also as if it were on a mobile device, like a smartphone, like this. So those are just some fun facts. Let's go back to the computer preview. And in order for manipulating this section to make sense, we need to know what a header and a footer is. So when we first jump in here, general, header is what's selected. So the header is where the logo, the categories, and the search bar appear. It's actually separated by these very thin gray lines that you see up here and right below it here. So this whole section here is the header. And then if I scroll down to the bottom of this preview, I've hit the footer. So where it says sign up for my newsletter right here, you can see the white then kicks into the footer right here. So if this is the footer, all of this down here and all the way back up here at the top, this is the header then in between the header and the footer, we're looking at the background, aka the visual. So all this white space around my headline, all the white space between my text, all the white space around this photo, and of course all the white space around my featured categories and featured products here, all the way up to I hit this darkness, is considered the background, aka the visual, all of this area. So now that you know that, we can really dive in here. Let's go back up to the top. And I'm on the header tutorial. Let's go ahead and turn that off. We don't need that tutorial anymore. Now, when you make a change, you'll notice it starts loading. So you have to be a little bit patient in here. When you make your change, wait for it to load, and then you will see that change on the website. Now, another quick thing that I'd like to just introduce right about here is if you like the change you made, guys, go ahead and publish it right away. There's no draft. There's no save changes for this date. So up here at the top right is where you can actually publish that change. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because you could make six changes in a row and then only want to apply that first change. And then you won't remember those other five changes that you made to take them back. So you can disregard all the changes you've made and not publish any changes, or you can click publish and make that change official. In our case right now, what we did was make the tutorial 
deactive. Let's go back to settings. So header, tutorial, that was fun. Let's go to logo. And we can simply drag and drop our fav icon and our logo right into these boxes. There's my logo. It will start the preview and then it will show me the logo at the top left. I like it. I'm going to go ahead and publish that change right away. So now that is official on my website, which means if I go back up to the other tab I have opened with my customer facing website and I refresh the page, there is that change. All right, let's go back. We're going to change a few more things now. Back to settings. Mobile settings. This is to be able to change the mobile menu icon to pop out the menu. The top bar. Now, of course, the top bar is right up here. So if this is the top bar text, it's natural to assume that the background of it is the background of the top bar. Now, I'm going to be very simplistic today. I'm going to be doing black fonts on white backgrounds, but of course, you guys are going to be tinkering with colors a little bit more. So how would I change this color up here for the font? Top bar text color, you click, and I'm going to just drop this down into the bottom left corner so that it's pitch black. But of course, you could start moving this bar around and choosing the right color. You can, of course, type into this box if needed, if you're respecting any branding colors. And my change actually already loaded up, and you can see it here. Let's go ahead and change that background to be all white. That will load the change, and then we'll be able to see that over here. Perfect, so now it blends in with my header. Let's go back to settings. That was top bar, let's look at typography. So now we're looking at the text of the header. Do I want it to be pitch black? Yes, please. Let's drop, drop it down there. All right, the color has changed up here. Let's go back to settings. That was typography background. So now this is the background color of the header. Now I personally want to leave it white because I want it to blend in with my logo, but look at this. Let's just make this slightly off pinkish so that you can see the change that it makes. And there we go. <laughs> Let's switch that back to all white. Okay, let's go back to settings. That was the background, and next up we have display settings. So if you want the ability to sell by brand and have a brands button in your navigation, as well as a brands slider at the bottom of your website, you can just enable this, which I won't do today. Now, if ever you're wondering what these features do, there's always a nice little block of text explaining what it does. And if ever you still don't understand, you can always visit Documentation or Lightspeed's Help Center. Let's go back though. That was display. It's time to move on to the footer. Now that doesn't actually swoop me down to the bottom, so I'm just going to scroll all the way down so that we can see the footer. Typography, background. The font is already white, so I'm just going to open up background and make my footer pitch black. That will load the change and I will scroll back down to see it. And there we go, much darker. I've made a few changes. I like them all so far. I'm going to publish my changes before we continue. Okay, that just got pushed to my website. Let's go back to settings. So we looked at background. Display settings is next. Do you want to show the newsletter form at the bottom of your website all the way down here? Yes or no? You can turn that on or off. Social media. Now this is a very interesting one. People definitely should be broadcasting their social media on their websites. What this is, is it's tiny little icons that show up on the bottom here of your website. And what you need to do is actually go to your Facebook. That's if you have Facebook or Instagram. Grab your URL and then paste it in here. Now once you've typed that in, It'll start loading, and the URL that you dropped in here will now be clickable from the icon that was created right down here. So I have Facebook and I have Instagram. I type in or copy-paste my URL. That activates the little box, and now I have my Facebook an Instagram that is ready to be clicked on and then linked to whatever URL you dropped in here. 
Now, if you have all of the social media icons showing up, I just want you to know that in order to deactivate it, you just need to get rid of the text that might be in here as a placeholder, and that will get rid of the icon on your website. Let's go back to settings. That was social media. We have little widgets that can be plugged in, like feedback or key off. Contact details. Let's personalize what we see down here. Aperture Labs. A short description. the phone number, and the email address. And that would upload right there. Let's go back to the settings. Visual. Now visual again is all about the background, everything in between the header and the footer. Let's open up typography and let's actually change the fonts of our website. I'm going to change this one to offside. And I'm going to change the body to offside. Now, if ever you're wondering what fonts we have available, I want you to feel free to visit fonts.google.com where you can see all of the different Google fonts that are available. Now we can see that the font here changed on my website. It's a little bit robotic looking, if I can say it that way. It's the font I wanted. Let's keep going. Body color. This is again for the text. I'm going to make it pitch black. That's going to load. And now my fonts are very dark. Highlight color, this affects the settings of the color of the buttons and inactive states. So you see home is an active state. Let's go ahead and personalize the highlight color. Now I'm going to make this a nice deep red like this. And there we go. Oh, and there we go. Now I've made a few other changes that I like. Let's go ahead and publish those changes right away. All right, we've changed the website. Let's go back up, back to settings. That was the visual. The background, you can of course upload an image for the background of your website. You can drop it right here and then start positioning it or repeating it so that it looks good. But for those of you who don't want any images, you can just change the color of the background of your website right here. Now mine is already set to white, which I will leave it to. Back to settings. And now we're done with visual. Advanced again is for all of the extra features that might be available in other themes. It's time to move over to pages. Now we're on home page and on the home page you can add banners. Now this is a fun one that I really like to show off. You open up that section and of course you need to enable or disable. It's currently disabled. Let's turn it on and now we're going to drop some banners in here that will show up on the website. Let's scroll down a little bit just so I can get them both in my view. So let's drag the left, wait for that to load, and then I'll be able to drag the right. There we go. And now dragging the right. Now these banners also can be made clickable. As soon as you drop the URL into the left banner URL or right banner URL box, that activates the feature where these banners can just be clicked on and they go directly to that URL. So here are what the banners look like on the website. So as I scroll through the website, it already looks a lot more complete than when we started. It looks like an active website. A few banners, a few headlines, and all of that can start making your website look very complete. We're done with banners. Let's go back up to the settings. That was banners. Display settings. Now there's a lot of these types of features in Conform Plus, essentially on or off. Do you want to show tags on the bottom of the home page? Do you want to display the featured category titles, featured product titles, which these are down here below? Do you want to show new and sale icons? Do you want people to be able to see the total amount of products within a category or no thank you? Let's go back to settings. Those choices are up to you. Let's move from home page to product listing. Now what this is is essentially an overview of what your category sections could look like and all the different things you can change. Element color. What is that? That's where these little descriptions become very practical. Several elements would be adjusted like the price slider, the bottom of the page, and the plus and minus in the cart. 
Let's make that a deep red. Now you can see the slider has changed. Let's go back. That was the color element. Next up is display settings. So some more yes or no options. Do I want to show new and sale icons? Do I, do I want to show the total amount of products in each category or no thank you? Back to settings. Side menu. Now this is in regards to the categories that show up here. Do I want them to all be squished down or would I like them to all be opened up regardless of whichever section I'm in? Uh, more on and off stuff that you get to choose. Image settings over here. This is mainly for troubleshooting image sizes used by tech support. Let's switch that from product listing to product detail and then it'll preview a product over here on the right. Okay, and now we can change some things like the button color. This will affect the settings of all the colors in the button text, so add to cart throughout the shop. Now that means this right over here. So if we want to, we can make that any color we want, the cart and the text add to cart, as well as the plus and minus right there. So we could change that to white, like this. That will load over here. And there we go, it's now white. So. That was a quick introduction to customizing your website using the theme preview. I hope this helped you. Hope you're having a great day. Thanks for your time. Bye-bye.